Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. For those of you who like to work with casting compounds, you will no doubt have seen many videos showing the terrazzo method and yeah, it's very popular. However, <laughs> I'm not such a big fan. There's just something about it that I don't like. But I did have an idea to do the same kind of method, but instead of using my leftover flakes of Aquacast, I wanted to try it with glass. So that's what we'll be doing today. And if it sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Today's idea came about by accident. I was actually planning something different. I was going to be making a big resin tabletop and I didn't want to use as much resin as, as it would need to fill the mould. So I had the idea to use crushed safety glass and the actual project didn't work. So I had all this safety glass left over and that's how the idea for this video came about. Now, this safety glass was free. I emailed a local glass manufacturer and asked them if they had any spare crushed um, broken safety glass. It's not crushed, is it? It's just broken safety glass. It breaks into these little pieces, which is really perfect for what I'm doing today. And they were so nice and they said, of course, they'll put some aside for me. And so I went to collect it and it was free and everyone likes free, don't they? So anyway, my safety glass had quite a lot of bits of tinted glass in it, which wasn't really what I wanted. So I did fish out quite a lot of those little dark bits of glass because I didn't want those in today's project. However, I did keep them aside because I thought they might be good for a different project. Right then, I've got my glass ready. Now it's time to mix up some Aquacast. For those of you who are not familiar with Aquacast, it's a casting compound or eco-resin from Elichem Resins and it's a fusion of powder and polymer which just needs the addition of water. I'm measuring approximately 100 grams of water and then 300 grams of Aquacast powder. The beauty of Aquacast is that you can add as much or as little water as you like. Today I want quite a thin solution because I want it to blend well with the glass without, you know, getting air pockets trapped. And I thought if it was a little bit more fluid, there's less chance of getting pockets of air trapped between the pieces of glass. Once I'd got it all measured out, I gave it a good mix and found that it was still a little bit too thick. So I added just a tiny bit more water. Don't add too much because a little bit goes a long way. And then just got kept going like that until it felt just right. Not too thick, not too thin. Once it was all mixed, I took two more of my silicon jugs, which are really good. I love these. I want to get some more actually. One of them's on its way out. <laughs> and I just poured out so th there was about the same amount in each one. And in this week's video, I'm testing out my new colours for the first time. They're from Homeware Design and they were very, very kindly given to me by one of my viewers who I would like to also call a friend because she's lovely. It's Shell from Shell Space. Please go and check out her um, YouTube channel. She's great. And I thought it was so kind of her. She took pity on me when she saw that I didn't have very many colours of, um, you know, my. I was using Jesmonite pigment and I didn't have many colours and she had some of these that she sent to me and I thought that was so sweet so thank you Shell they turned out so nice I love the colours the three colours I'm using are emerald blue lagoon and periwinkle and I think I just used one drop of each I didn't want to make the colours too strong Actually, after saying that, I've just noticed I added two drops in the green one. <laughs> but if you just add a tiny bit at a time and build up the colour, you can't go wrong. But it does go a long way, this pigment, so just a tiny bit at a time. 
After the colours were mixed, I started adding my glass. And once again, just add a little bit at a time. You don't want too much in there. It still needs to have a little bit of fluidity in the mixture so that the aqua cast can still flow and move between all the little bits. And while I'm mixing those up, let me tell you a little bit about the mould. Now, you do need to be careful about which kind of mould you're using for this method. You need something with strong walls so it can keep its shape. My mould has thick walls. It's from Devon Dotting and it's a handmade mould. It's not one of these cheaper ones where they use the smallest amount of silicon as possible. It's a good, solid, sturdy mould. So that's quite important. Another thing is the walls of the mould, well, the walls of the finished pot need to be quite thick. And to demonstrate why, I'm going to take a step back in time and show you what happened with my first attempt. So for my first attempt, I used my bowl mould from Let's Resin. And as you can see from looking at it, the walls of the finished bowl are quite thin. And it was looking really good. I'd been sanding away to expose the glass and it was looking good apart from a bit where it had bulged because the um, mould, the walls of the mould were quite thin and look. <laughs> That's what happened. It was looking really good and all of a sudden it fell to bits in my hands. And that was because the wall of that bowl was so thin, it was just relying on that little bit of aqua cast holding each bit of glass together and it just didn't do the trick so that's my word of warning <laughs> i've shown you what i wasn't going to show you yeah so you don't make the same mistake that i did so let's go back to the mold that did work Right, back to the project and here's the mould. It's my chubby pot mould from Devon Dotting and as you can see it's a really good quality thick mould and there's plenty of space in there so the walls of the pot will be nice and thick. And all I'm doing is gently putting in my glass and aquacast mixture and letting it kind of find its own way down. I'm not forcing it. I'm just putting it onto the top and gently pushing it over the edges but if it doesn't want to go I'm not forcing it because that is what will make the sides of the mould bulge out it needs to be able to find its own space naturally because obviously if you force it into a space it will bend the silicone won't it so yeah that's what I'm doing I'm alternating the colours so I've got a good mixture of colours going on and then once it's all in give it a good tap and give the table a good bang and let everything find its own place inside of there and also to dislodge any pockets of air and that's as simple as it is really and then about an hour later it was ready to demold i did the same thing with the lid and it i took my time with it it took me quite a while so i'm fast forwarding it a little bit so you can get the idea but yeah that's the that's about as hard as it gets. Not very hard at all, is it? So while my pot was curing, I kind of had the bug. I wanted to have another go at something else with some different colours. This time I've gone for, I think they were plum, pink and princely purple. I'm not sure of the exact colour of the name of the pink, but yeah. You get the gist of it, don't you? <laughs> I will leave a link in the description to the homeware design um co homeware design co I think they're called. Uh so you can go and have a look at all the colour range. So yeah, pinks and purples in this one, and this time I'm doing coasters. I added the glass to the mixture in just the same way as before but I didn't show you that because you've seen it all before now and this time to make it a little bit different I wanted to try out some of those big bits of glass that I had which I'd taken out so I didn't want them in my aquacast mixture but I wanted to try it laying them flat on the mould and then pouring the mixture on top to see how that would look. So this time I'm using my coaster mould from Moulds and Shapes and my Royal Coaster mould which is also from Moulds and Shapes. It's just like a giant coaster which I love to bits. It's so versatile. I've used it loads and loads. But you'll see that in a minute. So first of all, let's do the coasters. I'll zip through it again because 
You've seen all this already. You've seen the details of what I do. And I really want to show you the next step. So with the coasters, because they're thinner, you have to take a little bit more time arranging the glass because you don't want two bits on top of each other because then it will be protruding out the bottom of your finished coaster. You want a nice flat surface. So I did take a while making sure that there was nothing sticking out. And with this second coaster, the Royal Coaster, it's a lot deeper than the other coasters. So it wasn't so much of an issue really, it was quite easy. But yeah, just this, exactly the same thing again. I left them for about an hour and then it was ready to take them out of the moulds. Right then, we're going to start with the Chubby Pot because that had been curing for longer. So we'll do that one first. Now, bear in mind, it's going to be completely transformed in a couple of minutes. But before doing anything to it, I already loved it. I loved that kind of mottled pattern that the glass gave it. Um, in fact, it's I, I'm thinking as I speak, it might be nice to do one without exposing the glass just to get that mottled effect. After all, the glass was free, wasn't it? So, yeah, let's have a look at the lid. Oops. <laughs> and there we have it. One of the bits of glass is already showing its face through the surface. And yeah, lovely colours. Now, the reason I kept it quite pale is because I used a lot of water in the mixture. As I said at the beginning, I tried to keep the mixture quite thin. And what happens is, as it dries out, the water comes to the surface that's trapped in there. It comes out to dry out but as the water comes out it brings the pigment with it so it kind of darkens so that's why I started off pale so that it wouldn't be a problem when it darkened by the next day it's usually about a day later you start to see it looking a lot darker so what I've got here is a 180 grit sanding block and some water and I'm just using it wet and rub 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 over time it will all come off where the glass is and the glass will be exposed. It does take a while but it's really enjoyable because you start to see it transforming before your very eyes. So I'm going to cut the rest of the sanding out. I would say it took me about 10 minutes, no more than that. Um, it looks like it took ages but 10 minutes isn't long really is it? So let's have a look how it looked when I'd finished. So I'm just giving it a final rinse because you don't want any residue on there. And there it is. Isn't that a transformation? I really, really love the effect. And like I said, next time you see it, it will be a little bit darker, which is a shame really, because I do love those colors, but it still looks great. And now let's have a look at the coasters. So here we have the Royal Coaster and as you can see where I laid the glass directly onto the mould there's no sanding to do there so it does make me wonder about when you're doing something flat like this whether you should just put the glass directly onto the mould rather than mixing it with the Aquacast. I'm not sure I should try it that way as well but that's another option. And there's the other one, one of the coasters. And as I said before, it looks quite nice without taking the um, thin layer of Aquacast away from the glass, doesn't it? Quite a nice effect. But anyway, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to sand it. And I did a heart as well off camera because I had a little bit left in my tubs and I scraped it all out and made a little heart with that heart that was in the middle of the coaster mould. So let's sand them and see how these ones look. So I've cut out most of the sanding again because, yeah, I don't think you need to see it all. I'll just show you the end bit of each one so you can have a quick look. Because, again, they will be transformed when you see them next time. They'll be darker, completely different. But, yeah, that's quite a transformation, isn't it? Sorry if it keeps going a little bit out of focus. I could do with a new camera, really. So let's have a look at the coasters. 
Oh, and the heart as well. For some reason, I only filmed myself doing one of the coasters. But here they are, the next day. And as you can see, everything is darker. Right, so the next step, when they're dry, really, I, I should have left them two days. But I'm leaving the bottoms exposed. <laughs> no one wants an exposed bottom, do they? <laughs> Anyway, I've left the bottoms exposed so that they can continue to dry out. But because, you know, I needed to get the video done, I am going to be doing the sealing now. And I've decided to use wax. It's Clark's Wax for Stone and Concrete. And I'm just going to apply it with a soft cloth. You know, one you would use for polishing around your house. Just using that and that works fine with this. One thing I would say is if you're going to use anything underneath your coasters like um, pads, you know, like the, oh, what are they called? The felt pads or cork or anything that you want to stick to the bottom, don't use wax on the bottom because nothing will stick to it. I would recommend using the Hydroflow sealer for the bottom. And so here's the two coasters. The one on the right has been sealed and the one on the left hasn't. And I just wanted to show you the comparison because it does darken the colour. Hopefully you can see that one's a little bit darker than the other. So that's another reason why it's good to start off with your mixture paler than you actually want it to be. I did really like the pinks and purples, but I have to say... This pot is my absolute favourite. I love the colours. I absolutely love them. And I do love this mould as well. It's such a great shape for the pot. And like, like I said before, as you can see looking down on it, the walls of the pot are nice and thick. So I was quite confident that it wasn't going to fall to bits. <laughs> but we won't talk about that, will we? That was, <laughs> that was quite traumatising. <laughs> Right, so that's most of the polishing done. Is What you can do is leave it to dry for about an hour and do another coat if you want to, or just buff it up to give it a little bit of a sheen. But it's as simple as that. And the, with the Royal Coaster, what I would have done is put maybe a tassel and some beads on it, but I didn't have time, so I'm, I'm not showing that bit. <laughs> but we'll finish now with the polishing and the sealing. Let's have a look at the beauty shots. Let's start with what I think is the star of the show. I couldn't be happier with this one. Everything about it, I just love um, yeah, it just worked out just so perfectly. And there were no air bubbles in it either. Have you noticed that? It's not pitted at all. It turned out so good by using the Aquacast, just a little bit thinner. So I think I'm going to put some wax in there and have it as a candle. And here's one that you didn't actually see me making. I made this at the same time as I made the bowl that fell to bits. But this one turned out nice nice it's a bit darker than I would have liked it but I love how the blue and the green merge together like that and I do think that that coaster is really pretty and here's a picture of them all together and yeah my, my favorite is still the pot but what's your favorite I'd like to know which one you like best well, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this project. It was so much fun. Even the learning curve that I had to go through. Yeah, that was even fun. I had a lot of pleasure from making it, even if it did smash. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for today. And I will see you next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.